What's going on everybody? So today I wanna to talk about gearing strategies. And if you're like me and you've kind of entered uh, the sort of early mid game grind, I say mid game, but it's not really mid game. It's just sort of a point where it's harder to level. Uh, you have to earn a lot of your rare gear pieces and you're kind of bottlenecked by light crystals, etc. There are a few strategies that I'd recommend on how to get your squads upgraded as much as possible. So I wanna dive into that. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos on some shop guides, etc., one of the biggest bottlenecks for gearing, as I mentioned, are these crystals, because they are only farmable through hard nodes um, or through a few different challenges, or you can buy them and occasionally some of the shops. Everything else is relatively easy to acquire, and you can do so just by farming everything every day. But the like, crystals themselves, well, those are bottlenecked through daily gameplay. So you kind of want to focus in on one character due to this. If you just go around and upgrading certain pieces on every single character, like right now I'm working on Gauze, and then I can actually put a piece into Uglek or Dunhar. Uh, why? Because, well, they only need one light crystal potentially. Uh, well, in this case, it just needs two, but some of the gear pieces only need one, like for example, this one, and I can actually upgrade that immediately, okay? And yes, I could get, if you see here, 250 HP from this piece, which is not bad for sure on a healer here. But the problem is, is that that's all I'm getting. And it would take forever to just sit through here and upgrade one piece at a time on every single character. It could potentially take like three or four weeks for me to get to the next gear tier. So my recommendation is to go full on only upgrade pieces on your main damage dealer or tank. Now you can go with healer, um, right? Those are all three of the roles, basically. <laughs> uh, but I personally think that the healers, generally speaking, um, aren't going to get nearly as much value as some sort of DPS or tank unit. Because if you can see here, this heal, for example, and oftentimes the heals have a base amount and then a percentage of the character's max HP. Now, when you're raising this character's gear level, uh, this percentage of max HP heal doesn't really go up by all that much, right? Because it's a percentage of a percentage of an increase, right? You're only like increasing your HP by like, let's say 10% by getting up to the next gear tier. And then this is a percentage of that percentage, which means that it's not really healing all that much or rather increasing all that much, right? So I much prefer just relying on the base heals for these guys and then focusing on upgrading your DPS or tanks. Now, let me talk about the disadvantage and advantage for both of them. Now you can see here, I've actually upgraded Strider and just to let you know, why am I saying focus on one character, whether it be DPS or tank, is because you actually get a massive bonus when you raise to the next gear tier. And this is what is crucial. I wanna see if I could show you here. Um, I'm a little bit further away. By the way, little bonus tip here for you all. If you see someone that has a plus sign, it's a lie. Oftentimes, as you can see here, this is, says, oh, I can equip this piece right here, right? There's a plus sign right here, but it says I need one of the thread, two of these shadow resistance essence, and look it, I can't even craft two of them. So don't get pranked sometimes. Sometimes you can't even upgrade them. Um, it's a little bit of a scam, but we're trying to get to the next gear tier because we're gonna get the bonus from the gear, but then we're also going to get a massive bonus from the entirety of the gear tier upgrading. And that is really what we're looking for, okay? So we're gonna go through here and I'm gonna just try to find a couple of ways I can get some light crystals or shadow crystals rather. Um, this is kind of what I spend most of my energy on per day, uh, just because you actually get additional pieces of gear at the bottom here. So it's actually really, really good value. It's something I did not realize initially, um, but you actually get the gear pieces as well as the shadow crystals or the light crystals, which is really, really important. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up a couple of pieces here. I needed some candles, no problem. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and buy another refresh. Not gonna go ahead and refresh too much, but there we go. Got my two candles, perfect. And then lastly, we have to pick up a couple of our one health essence and then we're done. Pretty nice, pretty simple, not too difficult. Obviously, as I said, this is like a very, very much bottlenecked resource and definitely requires multiple days of gameplay. But you can see here, we could finally equip this piece of gear. Now this piece of gear is gonna give us 190 HP, 34 resistance, each one of these pieces of gear, um, they do various different things. Um, damage, focus, 29 armor. In the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really change much. You can see here, 
And this guy's got 9,116 HP. This is a large character. So getting 190 HP is like 2% of that HP increase. So it just goes to show you how minimal the gear actually is. However, when you go ahead and upgrade a gear tier, look at what happens. We also get the massive increase. We got 759 HP. We also got damage, armor, focus, resistance uh, across the board, which is huge, right? It's about a 8% increase in HP. Um, it was about a roughly like four or 5% increase in damage, so on and so forth. So the goal should be to get to gear tier first, not just randomly assigning gear pieces. And the reason why we're focusing damage dealers and tanks, well, tanks, they get more value out of all of their different stats like armor, resistance, and HP. And that allows them to survive longer and helps you a lot in autoing, especially for three stars, for those of you that don't want to participate, but also allows you to actually use their provoking abilities or their taunting abilities without just dying. Because otherwise, these abilities kind of end up killing your tank units, which is a little unfortunate, right? And then the other reason for DPS is that you're just going to do more DPS, right? Upgrading a DPS unit is going to obviously increase their damage, it's gonna increase um, their armor and HP, which allows them to passively stay a little bit alive or, or at least stay um, alive a little bit easier and then also get you massive value in terms of the damage. So my personal preference is to level up their DPS because the better DPS that you do, the less time you have to sit through basicing or you know using random abilities, trying to get through each of the waves. Um, Cause oftentimes if you're manualing, which there's a lot of us that manual because we want to get the first three star clear and then we can auto battle. What you'll end up doing is kind of basicing through at the end of it to try to recharge your abilities a little bit. And if you're doing that, well, you have to, oftentimes can actually take a lot longer, take a lot more damage. So by having a damage dealer that can actually one shot things on an AOE, you're going to really benefit from just not taking as much damage, which means less need for healers, less needs for tanks, and of course, having your DPS survive, which is why I went for Gauze and Strider, because they are both my AoE DPS for each of the factions. So hopefully that gives you guys a couple of ideas in association with gearing up, who to gear up, uh, and how to gear up your units. Always focus on one unit at a time, even within your own team. You really get a lot more value getting that gear tier maxed out. After that, then you start on the next character. I would personally recommend that you kind of want to level up all your characters at a gear tier at a time, uh, meaning that you go from gear five to six on one character and then the next character five to six. You can potentially focus on one character six to like, you know, just keep going and going and going and going. Uh, the only problem with that is that you might have a really overpowered unit and then your other characters might just die, which means it's very difficult to three star some things. But um, that one is up for debate a little bit. Um, I think both have merit. And especially if you want, let's say Strider, who's a human, and and you want to use him in various different game modes um, like three starring light campaign but also you're using him for challenge then you might want to focus on one character it really depends on how strong what characters you're using etc and we could talk about for hours on what to go with where to put your resources etc but hopefully this gives you at least some sort of guidance thanks for watching and i'll see you off the next one